Hey, how's it going, guys? This is Sam here with CustomPCReview.com, and we're here at CES 2014. We are at the Thermaltake Suite, and we're going to check out some cool new uh, cases that they have on display here. So here we have Shannon, uh, who is the marketing manager yes. of Thermaltake, and uh, he's going to show us around. So why don't you go ahead? Thanks, Sam. Okay, first things first for our chassis lineup. We have two really high-end enthusiast chassis we're pushing for because previously we had um, had a little bit of limitations, like 240 mil rads was like the maximum you're going to do within our chassis, or maybe like a 120 in the rear. So we really wanted to go crazy this year and just do something that we knew enthusiasts would really like and something they've been asking for, which is much larger cooling system fitments. So we made basically this is a, like a fully modular case you can pretty or i should say basically you can mod like the drive base or all modular can all be yanked out the five and a quarters can be yanked out as you can see yeah this is not necessarily a standard cooling system this is more to show what can fit like how many radios can fit like for instance your top and front can fit uh 420 mil, all the way up to 420 mil rads so basically three by 140 the rear can fit 140 the bottom can fit 280 which is two by 140 so you're talking a ton of liquid cooling equipment can fit in here. But what's cool about that is we're not expecting people to build something like that. We're expecting just to give the option. So if someone wants to put a rad in the top or in the front instead of one or the other, it gives them the option to do so. And also, if you build an air cooling, so you're just dropping a system into one of these, it, like I said, it's like a hybrid chassis. I mean, this thing is literally an extreme air cooling to begin with, or you can go crazy and build an extreme water cooling. Mm -hmm. And so it comes with two 200 mil rads, or two, <laughs> two 200 mil fans in the front, mm -hmm. one 200 mil fan in the top, and a 140 in the back. Awesome. And uh, it's the Urban T81, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, it has been released or? Uh, this is something you're going to see toward the end of Q1, beginning of okay. Q2. Awesome. And uh, any idea on MSRP or when, you know, how much it's going to cost when it ships? Yeah, actually, um, MSRP on this is very reasonable for the features it has. This one hits the market at about 189 189 Awesome. So a great full tower case for, you know, with tons of cooling capacity for high-end gamers. And, yeah. Uh, Possibly workstations. Well, workstation, yeah. server, whatnot. And now here's its, here's its brother. This mm -hmm. is the Core V71. And the reason we named it that is we're kind of going back to our core influence, which was when we first were building cases, we were trying to build the crazy high-end enthusiasts at the time. You know, we had some mm -hmm. really crazy designs. And we're trying to go back to just that kind of same crazy level of, like, innovation as to what we can do with a chassis. And this one has very similar fitment. The only difference is the rear for a radiator can only fit a 120 versus 140, and the bottom can fit 240 instead of 280. So not a real limitation because the two 420s mm -hmm. would still fit here. You still rip all the drive cages out if you want and have some cool stuff. And a huge window here, so it makes for great for like mm -hmm. showcase PCs. Yep. And one really cool feature that we saw was on a lot of chassis out right now, whenever you can pull the drive cages out like we can, you, um, you usually have like drive mounting on the back of the motherboard tray, and you've seen it, Sam, where mm -hmm. you know, it's like a 2.5-inch drive or two 2.5-inch drives. Yep. The problem with that, you know just like I do, cost per gigabyte on SSDs still is not where you want it to be compared to platter drives. You're talking yep. a huge difference in market. Mm -hmm. So we wanted, to create a, uh, we wanted to create a solution for this, and I'm going to show you guys how we did this. All right, let's you're, take a look. You're already pulling those uh, drive trays out anyways, so we figured why not reuse them when you're mounting. So if you pull all of those drive trays out and you need mounting you can see that you have mounting for SSD on here along with a large hard drive whichever you choose to put there okay so, so both two and a half and three and a half inch hard uh, drives yeah and mm -hmm. so and all you do is just drop it in right here onto these onto these little pre cutouts it snaps into place it's secure mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere unless you want it to be mm -hmm. you run your cables and you can't even see it. And there's two of them. So you have another one down here you can move mm -hmm. one of those drive trays to. Okay. And they'd be completely yeah. invisible to the front of the chassis. Awesome. So, you know, in, in case you want to put a water cooling setup and, and you've mo removed these, uh, the, the cages, you can still leave that there? Yeah. You can put awesome. them there and then you mm -hmm. just have like phantom drives. You mm -hmm. know you have drives there, but no one else will be able to see them. Awesome. All right, so uh, that is the Core V71. Yeah, Core V71, and the uh, price point on that is one fifty nine ninety nine. And it's out? That, way, once again, it'll be about the same. You'll see it right around, well, I'm going to say into Q1, right around March, April time frame. Okay, awesome. All right, let's move over to this case right here. It looks like uh, the Urban <coughs> SD1. Yeah, if you remember our original Landbox and Landbox Lite, this is a very similar chassis, but we made some definite improvements, including the new Urban styling. 
but we also added mounting for one of our uh, all-in-one liquid coolers. We added mounting for SSDs, and we put a drive cage down at the bottom that holds two drives. So mm -hmm. you can have the best of both worlds. And what's really awesome is on this tooling right here, on this metal, we actually used to have parts going down for holding hard drives. We removed that so you can have longer graphic cards. So as long as it can go up to here and it's not a super tall custom PCB card, it'll mm -hmm. go in there no problem. Awesome. All right. And it looks like you guys can fit uh, full-size ATX power supplies as well? Absolutely. And mm -hmm. not to mention, to make it easier for you guys to build in, this whole tray, this whole unit comes out. This mm -hmm. unit that holds the PSU comes out, and the motherboard tray comes out. Oh, so you okay. can really build it mm -hmm. outside the chassis, then slide it in, make it a lot easier for you to work with. Awesome. Okay. And uh, pricing and availability info on this one? Uh, 99 and availability should actually be quite soon. Okay. Awesome. All right, and uh, looks like you guys got two more uh, cases right here. This one's the Urban T31. This is the T31 and R31. So figure, you saw the original S series where you had the, like, like the one over there, mm -hmm. you had the round door with it to kind of recessed into the main panel. This one's a little more sleek melded door into the front of the panel. So you can see it just kind of flows mm -hmm. to the front. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't like doors, we actually have the R series. It, it carries the same exact design language, same design mm -hmm. styling. Mm -hmm. But no front door. There's no front mm -hmm. door. It's just open drive base. Awesome. So it makes life a little easier for when, you know, like those that really don't want a door because some people just don't care for them. So we mm -hmm. wanted to give that option. Awesome. And uh, pricing and availability on these? These actually should be available really soon. Okay. And $79.99, $89.99. So with the door, adds about 10 bucks to it. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, where should we go to next? Power we supplies power supply. or uh, the cases over there? Uh, we can go power supply. Okay, power supplies. All right, so we're going to check out some of the power supplies that uh, Thermaltake has. So um, why don't you talk about the Tough Power series? Okay, well, with Tough Power, we um, actually, I'm just going to talk about these guys right here because they're the same thing. But Tough Power, originally, when we started it, it was a super high-end supply, but it was also really high wattage. Mm -hmm. However, in current day, current day systems with a single card, which a lot of gamers have, Mm -hmm. You don't need a thousand plus plus supplies. You're actually falling somewhere out of the effic efficiency range. So basically, we're lowering the wattage, but still, but still keeping the quality builds like you, Thermal Take, uh, the Tough Power Series is known for, mm -hmm. and also the gold certification. Now you can get it all the way down to 550, 650, 750, and figure price point like for the 750, the higher end, you're looking at right around 110. Awesome. Yeah. But now one of the really exciting ones, and you've probably seen a little news on it recently over the past few months, is the DPS supplies. Mm -hmm. Those are our digital power solutions. They okay. are fully modular, so therefore mm -hmm. that should be a, like a modder's dream, you know, being able to sleeve them, do all the stuff they do with them. Mm -hmm. But not to mention, the big thing about those is if you come over here, building a power supply, we've had the digital solution for a while. Because a lot of people are like, well, why are you guys, you know, why it takes so long for you guys to come out with it? We've had the hardware for a while. It's this that we had to spend a lot of time on. We took mm -hmm. a lot of time to develop the actual DPS app, as it's called. This is your DPS app. This is how you monitor and you control the power supply. So this has a lot of cool features. You can, you'll can you notice everything's real-time updating, but whatever you have selected is actually up here on this large gauge. So, mm -hmm. so you can check out how much you're paying for electricity at that given moment. You can check out the temperatures. Well, this, uh, is, this is actually building up right. as the time goes on. It tells you how many hours it's been running. Oh, okay. And so this All tells right. you how much we're, we, you would pay, or actually the hotel's paying right now. Uh -huh. But one cool thing, obviously it doesn't automatically know this, yep. so we add a feature so that you can enter your oh. kilowatt hour amount yep. so that it gives you an accurate, an accurate reading on how much you're spending. Mm -hmm. Now this is, I could see this being very useful for people that do like the GPU mining. Yeah, because yep. you know these mining, guys, yeah. yeah, Bitcoin, Litecoin, whatever, yep. what have you, they are allowing, the, um, now we're allowing them to see like, in real time, how much they're pulling and what it's affecting. Yep. And also, this thing automatically catalogs it <laughs> in mm -hmm. six hour blocks. So you can see, it shows you anytime maybe you're seeing some peaks or valleys or maybe jumps in power usage or mm -hmm. efficiency drops. And then you can start monitoring that and see if it's a regular thing and maybe even check and diagnose where the problem's coming from. Mm -hmm. So it really yep. can be used also as informational, but also as diagnostic. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, looks very good. And uh, these power, DPS power supplies are already available, correct? Uh, 650, 750 is. Mm -hmm. Some higher wattages are coming out, like the yep. one we're showing right here. The one that's actually demoing on the screen is a 1250 watt platinum rated. Wow, platinum. And that, so one, pull, that one pulls in about 314.99 for its MSRP, mm -hmm. so which is quite reasonable, reasonable yeah. for being a platinum supply at that high of a wattage. Mm -hmm. 
but that's like your really high-end enthusiast supply. And also one thing, since we are over here, it's kind of not a PSU product, but this is just kind of a sneak peek for some of your guys who wanted to see something. Mm -hmm. You will notice that this liquid cooling is not something you normally see. Mm -hmm. This is something yep. we're working on internally. This is something, this is kind of just a sneak peek of what we're working on in our labs over there. Oh, um, yeah. This is all just uh, very cost efficient liquid cooling products. Mm -hmm. Imagine just, you And know, this is a full cooling loop, not just one of those all-in-one uh, systems, right? Yeah, it's an expandable cooling loop. It uses okay. industry standard unicorder fittings, uh -huh. so you can use any fittings you want. You don't have to use ours. You can use anything. Mm -hmm. You can add on different components from other manufacturers. It doesn't matter. You can, you, so far, these haven't been confirmed to even sell. The, like I said, these are very alpha, very mm -hmm. early. This yep. is just something we're messing with and possibly mm -hmm. could be, you never know, it could come to market and be yep. a full saleable individual item product or we may sell as a kit. We haven't even got mm -hmm. far enough confirmation to really even decide that part yet. Okay, well, for those of you guys who are watching, if you guys are interested in a thermal take uh, full, fully customizable water cooling loop, definitely leave a comment in the description box below and uh, we're going to make sure uh, Shannon takes a look at that. And he uh, responds individually to each one. How about that? Th thanks for committing me to that one. <laughs> awesome. All right, so what else are we going to check out today? Okay, you know what? Let's go take a look. I'm actually going to show you the dry components. I All right, so uh, we're over here, and uh, you're going to show us some of the uh, individual components for liquid cooling, your prototype. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show you some of this, along with a couple of the small things we'll go over. But this is the stuff like you saw over in that system, but these are actually the dry parts, the ones that aren't running right now. This mm -hmm. is the one that you saw, it's under reservoir with an integrated pump in the bottom. You'll notice we actually created a stand so that it surrounds a pump, you don't have to look at the pump. And we're even better, because a lot of people get really annoyed having to try to find somewhere to mount the pump. Yep. This is all one unit. Or right, if yeah. you wanted a separate pump, you have a lower area where you can mount, where you can mount fittings side or top then the heater core style radiator is a great mix between value and performance because when um well all this product speak for itself if when it becomes available you know send to you guys you guys try it and let me know performance but so far we've seen some really good performance out of this and being that it's open between the tubes mm -hmm. you can actually run something like uh, low speed pwm fans and yep. really get some really good performance out of it awesome so get great performance with uh you know quiet as well Quite exactly, awesome. and it's, uh, it just gives you much better than air cooling performance because especially with now with the higher TDP parts, it really helps to have a liquid cooling system available. And then Nick series, the non-interference coolers, the ones that don't have any ram clearance problems, we actually mm -hmm. went a bit bigger on the L32 series. So it's, it's a new design, the L series, where you'll notice it has a different design fa fan array along with a different design fan. This one is a 140 mil fan, so therefore larger fan means it doesn't have to run as fast to get the same airflow, mm -hmm. and so yep. it's quieter and better performance. Exactly. Awesome. All right, so uh, is there anything else you'd like to show us in this section right here? Just one thing, just a couple over? fans, and we'll be, and I think you'd be pretty good here. This is right. our Luna series. You've seen this probably on our social media just recently. Mm -hmm. These are uh, anti-vibration rubber mounting. They are LED lit, white, blue, or red. And then our Peer series are your standard replacement fans, but higher performance from us. Mm -hmm. You have, you have non-LED, which is just straight black plastic, mm -hmm. or the clear plastic ones are um, LED, which is white, blue, or red as well. Yep. And then we got, and those come in 120 or 140. And then you have your peer series, which is also is the two, um, 20 cm or 200 millimeter ones as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, are all these products uh, released yet, or? Uh, Luna is just now coming on the market. It's, mm -hmm. It should be very soon. You should see it coming out. I mean, they just recently did the, you know, the announcement and everything on it. So figure mm -hmm. it should be showing up very soon. Okay, and uh, MSRP on that? Well, right here. Um, the Luna, 1499. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking the Pier, yep. these guys, I'll show you right here. Oh, okay, variable pricing yeah, depending variable on- Yeah, variable pricing uh, depending on what it is. The, yeah. Yeah, up here, like the, for instance, the one that's non-LED, the um, 120 millimeter, you're talking 699, mm -hmm. whereas the one that's LED is 899. Yeah. The, the big guy, that's mm -hmm. gonna be 1299 um, without LED and 1499 with LED. Awesome, all right. So